day 352, I think, or 353, I might be losing count. Um, Revelation 7. And I don't know if you all can tell, maybe a snowflake will land on my jacket and you can tell, but it's lightly snowing here. Um, it's really cold, but I'm bundled up. That's okay. Um, being cold or being hot, you know, even our attitude towards it, um, you know, we have these automatic reactions of like, oh, it's too hot. It's too something. And we resist and we maybe even have negative feelings about it. Um, and we think that it's uncomfortable. We think. Um, and we don't like it or we don't like discomfort. But when you can relax and actually just see it as a circumstance and an experience and, re and just be with it, you can shift. You shift into neutral, then you can even shift into positive. Like, ooh, it's cold. What a neat experience this is. Because we get so comfortable in our temperature controlled homes these days that we, um, we resist, you know, and, you know, it's too hot in the summer, it's too humid, it's too this or that. Like, do you notice that we humans are oftentimes just complaining? It's too, it's too, it's too, like Goldilocks walking around all the time, looking for everything to be just right all the time. Um, boy, I can identify with that. Okay, so today is the power of the pause, which is a little bit of what I was just talking about. If you can pause for a minute and just isolate out the circumstance, separate out your feelings, because we think it just means this, and then we just fall into, um, we create our results by how we think how we feel, how we act. And when you can pause, that's what all the great teachers teach us. Jesus uh, is no example, no exception. And in this chapter of Revelation 7, that was immediately what struck me. Immediately. Actually, what immediately struck me was the whole be still and know, but what is that? But pausing. The power of the pause is that you can be still and know, and you could calm the F down. <laughs> um, but we immediately, the vision continues, and we get an image of four angels stretching out and guarding the four corners of the earth and preventing the four winds. So there's no wind. So what do you think of when there's no wind? Just stillness, right? The pause. And going, again, going in metaphorically into ourselves, whether it's our nervous system or our brain, there's just always something going on, right? Chatter, reaction, input, output, like, blah, just on autopilot versus the intelligence and the beauty of the human and having a mind and having consciousness is that we can tap into the power to pause, to take a breath, quiet our minds, quiet the wind, windiness and the storminess of our thoughts and call upon all of the heavens, the angels, God, um, and we get this image at of like all of these people that have had the seal of God placed on them and that are worshiping. They have robes of white on. They have cleansed, you know, been cleansed by the blood. We have all that imagery in the middle when we pause. And then we even go into, um, it ends with an image of, Jesus on the throne and the lamb. So when I think of the God, sorry, God on the throne and Jesus and the lamb there. So we have the power and mightiness of a throne, but yet the humbleness and the innocence of a lamb. And in order to ascend in consciousness, 
to experience what God truly has to offer, we have got to be humble. It is the path. It is the only way. You have to humble your ego, your individuality, your specialness, um, all of that. And in order to be at the foot of the throne and in order to access your higher self, your consciousness, you've got to submit and surrender and subdue, which requires humility and humbleness of the ego. And then you can have this peace and it says, and then you won't be scorched by the sun and you will have the living water. This can all happen within. This is all internal metaphors. <laughs> They're not, you know, this is not a vision, literally, of something happening out there. This is a metaphor of within. <sighs> and what can happen within the human. When we can slow down, Viktor Frankl calls it the, um, he used the words, the the space between stimulus and response to pause just the power to pause to be still and know to nourish yourself with living water that we always have that internal flow within when we unblock it with our ego that wants to um, well, it doesn't want to choke us and starve us out, but it, it, that's what it does by trying to be kind of in frantic panic mode all the time of getting and having and protecting and defending. And, you know, when the animal part of us or that survival part is in control, it's chaos. When the higher self comes online, and then it's, you know, it's a battle for a while, right? When yesterday we talked about the war within, it's a, it's a battle because the ego does not want to go away. It, it does, it thinks that you will be harmed if it goes away. It's tied to its identity, its role, its purpose for you um, to, to protect and defend you. But as the higher self, as you do the work, the inner work, and the spiritual, which is deep spiritual work, you can slowly start to relax and you can expand the expand and amplify the power of a pause. Our strength, just like a lamb, comes from our humbleness and our meekness to die to having to be right or to win or to have its way. Um, and that is where you can actually sit at the throne, be guarded, be guided, be, and have the refreshment of living of life itself when you're not trying to cling to life so much, but you're able to relax into it and even let it go. And paradoxically, again, in, in God's upside down world, that's when you actually come fully alive, where you're like, it's a whole new, amazing experience. And you can even become not just a, an observer of yourself, but even everybody else without getting caught up in all the judgment and the drama. <sighs> so I needed a little pause in this Revel book of Revelation because chapter eight, I think, is going to be the opening of the eighth. No, the seventh seal. Sorry. Um, so we're going to get back into, I mean, this was still a powerful vision, but it was a really calming one for me, like a Immediately when I started reading it, I was like, ah, I could just kind of, ah. So I hope it has that effect on you too. And that you cultivate and um, strengthen your power through stillness and pausing. Doing stillness practices 
nowness practices was what I'm even starting to call them too, because even being outside and walking still can take a, um, I got really close there for a minute, it still can take a lot of, um, you can be still even on a walk, like internally still. And cause it's really about being fully present in the now. That's where life truly is the eternal now. And our animal self is so worried about our survival of the, of the machine that the spirit inhabits, that it's always in the past or the future. And it has a hard time being in the now because there's not enough for it to do there. <laughs> and it wants to be doing something. Um, but it actually takes quite a bit of strength of character. And again, as you strengthen your humble muscles, um, you actually become stronger, like the the internal lion and the throne and you ascend. Anyway, I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to leave it there. So I hope you do something today to practice and strengthen your power by practicing pausing. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Rise and shine. Um, Revelation chapter 7 today, chapter 8 tomorrow.